Welcome to Accounting in Focus. In this video, we're going to discuss two methods for calculating bad debt expense and allowance for doubtful accounts. In the Intro to Bad Debt Expense video, we talked about the journal entries that you would use to record bad debt and allowance for doubtful accounts. I hope that before you watch this video, you'll watch that one because I think this video makes a lot more sense once you get the background information about bad debt expense. But just to review a little bit, we previously discussed, let's see, let me use my pen there, there we go. We previously discussed bad debt. And we said that there were two different methods to calculate bad debt. There's direct write-off and there's the allowance method. And under the allowance method we create a holding account that has some of our bad debt in it so that way when we know which accounts receivables go bad we can use up that allowance. Okay, that's why I said if you haven't watched the bad debt expense, the intro video, you might be you might want to go back and watch that one. Okay, so underneath the allowance method, there are two categories of methods you can use. And I like to think of them as the income statement method. and use the purple the balance sheet method okay everything else that we do from this point can be categorized as either an income statement method or a balance sheet method so if you think about what goes on the income statement revenue and expenses and if you remember, it goes on the balance sheet. The balance sheet is assets, liabilities, and equity. It's really important that you have these straight if you're going to do the allowance methods correct. Okay, so you might want to spend some time with the income statement and the balance sheet so that way you know which of the five categories go on each statement because that's going to be pretty key. If you remember all the journal entries having to do with an allowance when you're recording the bad debt expense and the allowance the journal entry always has let's see I'll put it here bad debt expense and allowance for doubtful accounts and I'm writing them in these colors so that way you know which account goes on which statement okay so your journal entry is always going to have bad debt expense and allowance for doubtful accounts. So bad debt expense is an expense that goes on your income statement. Allowance for doubtful accounts, we said that's a con contra asset and it's linked to accounts receivable. Contra asset goes with the assets on the balance sheet. Okay. So when you're talking about your allowance methods, it's important that you understand which one goes on the income statement and which one goes on the balance sheet because it does really matter for your calculations. So for the income statement method, we are going to look at an item from the income statement. So if we're given sales and accounts receivable, which one goes on the income statement? Well, I hope you know that that's sales. 
and it tells us previous experience indicates. So we're going to look through, you know, our previous collections experience, and it says 2% of sales is on, will be uncollectible. Okay, so based on looking, you know, five years back, an average of 2% of sales are uncollectible. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our 1 million in sales, and we're going to multiply that by 2%. Okay, or 0 0.02. Okay, remember 2%, that's 2 cents, right, out of a dollar, so that'd be 0 0.02. And so if I take 2% of 1 million, that's 20,000. Okay, so now we have to ask ourselves, what did I just calculate? I've got 20,000, but I don't know 20,000 what exactly. Well, if I'm using the income statement method, I'm using an amount from my income statement, we used revenue, to calculate another amount that goes on my income statement. So if you think about it, which of these two accounts goes on the income statement? Bad debt expense. So this 20,000 is my bad debt expense. Okay, so if I'm going to do my journal entry, I'm going to keep this color coded so that way it's similar to the one I wrote before. Okay, so I've got in blue, I'm going to put bad debt expense. And that's $20,000 debit because it's an expense and the expense is increasing. And let me get my purple. My allowance for doubtful accounts I'm just going to abbreviate accounts is going to be credited 20,000. Okay, so that's my journal entry. I'm using an amount from the income statement to calculate the income statement item. Now, I want to I want to do a T account. T accounts are really helpful when you're dealing with bad debt expense allowance for doubtful accounts. So according to my problem, and I'll do it in the same color I used, um, I have a $12,000 credit. So I'm going to start with a $12,000 credit in the account. I just credited the account another 20. So my balance is 32,000. Okay, so if you notice, if we're not careful, this balance could just keep going up and up and up and up. Okay? So as managers, we have to be really careful that, you know, we're making sure that we monitor that percentage and we don't just keep using the same percentage if my allowance balance keeps going up. Okay, so that's the first method. Now let's switch back to purple. Then we have the balance sheet method. Okay, and with the balance sheet method, a company is not going to use both methods. They're going to pick one or the other, whichever one they think better suits their company. So if they look at their previous experience and it looks like uncollectible accounts are more closely related to sales, they would use percentage of sales. And if it was more closely related to um, accounts receivable, they would use that. Okay, so this first method that we did under the income statement method, a lot of times it's called percentage of sales. Okay, and that may be what your textbook calls it, percentage of sales. Okay, I know in the textbook that we're currently using in my courses, it's called percentage of sales and they mention that it's an income statement method. But I think if you kind of think of these as the income statement methods and the balance sheet methods, I think that that will help you a little bit more 
if you kind of break them out into those categories. So the first balance sheet method that we're going to look at is called percentage of receivables. There's also another method too and we'll talk about that in another video. But under the percentage of receivables method I'm going to look at my accounts receivable and I'm going to take a percentage of my accounts receivable. So my accounts receivable is 200,000 and according to this 10% of accounts receivable will be uncollectible so I'm going to multiply that by 10% or 0 0.10 and if I do that that's an or <clears throat> okay if I do that then that would be 20,000 as well but in this case what am I calculating well remember we said before I'm using a balance sheet account so I'm calculating the balance in another balance sheet account so what I'm doing is I'm actually calculating the new balance and allowance for doubtful accounts so let's do the T account Okay, so my allowance account currently has, let me get that color, 12,000. Okay, but now instead of calculating what goes below the 12,000, what I'm actually calculating is the new balance in the allowance account. So I'm actually calculating the amount that's going to go here. So now what I need to figure out <coughs> is I need to figure out what amount goes here so that my math works out. So if I have a $12,000 credit balance, I need to get to a $20,000 credit balance. I am going to credit the account 8,000. Let me just actually make that 8 a little bit better. Eight. Okay, <clears throat> so that means that that is going to be the amount of my bad debt expense because I need to get the account from 12 to 20. So my journal entry would be bad debt expense 8,000 and my allowance. My allowance for doubtful accounts would be a credit of 8000 Let me put my DR and CR up here so you can see those. Okay, and I just want to put here next to the 20000 Notice we got 20000 under both methods, but this was the bad debt expense, so my journal entry was for 20000 But here I calculate the allowance balance. I'll just say allowance for DA, allowance for doubtful accounts. Okay, so can you see the difference between the two methods? So with the allowance, um, with the balance sheet method, my balance can never go higher than the amount that I calculate for my allowance for doubtful accounts. Okay, so that's kind of nice because we don't need to monitor the balance as much. Now, let's take this one step further. Let's say, let's kind of sauce this up a bit. Let's say that instead of a $12,000 credit balance, say I have a $9,000 debit balance. Okay, how would this change? Okay, well let's look at, let's make our T account. Always make the T account. Okay, and now I have a debit balance of 9000 So remember, when you do the allowance method, 
you're always calculating the new balance in allowance for doubtful accounts. Okay, so I'm actually going to write next to this balance. Okay, so that we understand that I'm not calculating the change in allowance for doubtful accounts, I'm actually calculating the balance in the account. So what would my bad debt need to be? <clears throat> well, the way you can kind of think about this is my, if I have a debit balance and allowance for doubtful accounts, that means my account is overdrawn. Okay. Which means that I did not allocate enough bad debt expense for all of the debts that went bad. So I not only need to cover the $9,000 deficit, but I also need to get to a $20,000 balance. If you want, think about this as, use a different color. Imagine that your checking account, as an example, was $100 overdrawn. You had a negative balance. And you need to pay your rent. And your rent is $500. So how much do I need to deposit so that your rent check doesn't bounce. Well, I have to cover the $100 I'm overdrawn, plus $500 to cover the check, so I need to deposit $600. Okay, same thing here. So, let's see, make sure I'm using the right color. So, $9,000 debit, the $9,000 overdrawn, plus the $20,000. So, in this case, my bad debt is 29000 Okay, so if I did a journal entry, I would debit bad debt expense for 29000 credit the allowance for 29000 I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments, and I'll make sure that I answer them.